Yes. Oh, okay. So, um, hi everyone. Uh, yeah. So, um, there, there's no uh, shorter way to title my talk. So, the very shortest description that I could describe my project is is to build a web-based audio player for obscure audio format. What it means, uh, if I want to make it even shorter, uh, no one will understand because it's basically a BRSTM web audio player. Okay, so um, before that, uh, hi, I'm Ken Rick. Um, I'm a developer at Shopee, and uh, one of my greatest achievements there is that I'm now featured in the Shopee Careers website. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> uh, thanks. Um, so yeah, um, this talk is more on, um, I'll tell you like, what is, uh, what is it that I'm building, and then like, some of the stories that I've gone through, and then I'll share like, some lessons that I learned from this, uh, from building this project. And anyway, this is my first time talk speaking at conference, so yeah, I'm very nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, before that, I have, uh, I need to tell you like, some motivation of why I built this. So in the past, uh, when I was, I'm still studying in university, I have exams to, to pass, and then to study for exams, I need to listen to music. And I thought that um, game music are very good because uh, game music are, um, are sort of just loops in the background, and then, and then um, it will uh, accompany uh, you to study. So, I naturally I Google like what are the places that I can find game music that could loop in the background. So I found out this uh, very this website called Smash Custom Music. Unfortunately, it's been taken down by the authorities because, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this this screenshot is from the Internet Archive. So um, they list down the li uh, some list of games, and then you can find out some music from there. So I found out like some uh, this kind of music, and then uh, it lists down all kind of uh, when I want to download like some of the music there. Um, it lists down all the kind of format that I is not familiar to me. So because everything is not familiar, I just picked the first one, which is this thing called BRSTM. So after I uh, download it and I find this file, I, I don't know how to play it. So uh, I Google around. And then I found out that BRSTM is a file format that contains audio data uh, with a loop point in it. So, uh, and it's kind of used in some of the Nintendo Wii games, and uh, it's popular in the Nintendo modding community. That's why some of the uh, community members have um, put in uh, that recreate this kind of um, this kind of audio format even for other games, and then. Uh, publish it in that Smash Custom Music uh, website. So yeah, the, my first question is, how do I play BRSTN? Uh, after I Google around, uh, I found this kind of program called Brawlbox that uh, is basically a toolbox for the modders to use to do a lot of other, uh, other things. But one of the function there is to play BRSTN file. So uh, I'm happy with this program. Then you may ask, why do I recreate this player on the web? Um, yeah, so basically, uh, after I graduate from, um, from university, I start working, and then when I, work, uh, when I start working, I was issued a MacBook, and this program only runs on Windows. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, how do I play, um, for a normal audio file, uh, how do I play it on the web? It's easy, you can just use this uh, HTML5 audio tag. But this audio tag cannot play BRSTM. So how? So yeah, uh, let's start a project to play this uh, audio, uh, audio format. But first, I encounter a very hard question. I need a name for this project. <laughs> so yeah, at that time, I, um, I'm watching this TV series, uh, Star Wars TV series called Star Wars Resistance. And uh, there's this character called Niku Bozo that is kind of noisy. So I think, yeah, it's kind of um, related to audio. So yeah, I just choose, the, choose that name as my project name. So yeah, the name of my project is uh, in, it's called Niku, and it's in GitHub. So yeah, my first idea uh, 
is to use FFmpg. So basically, FFmpg is a, a audio converter from one file to another file, and also it. Uh, okay, so FFmpg is a audio and video converter program that can convert from anything to anything else. It's very awesome. So one of my first big idea is that I use this program to convert BRSTN to MP3. Of course, it works, and I play the audio using uh, HTML audio. So is it soft? No, uh, because uh, MP3 is not able to loop by itself. So uh, I need to some other kind of idea. So my next idea is, what if I live stream the audio itself? And I build like, some kind of server that serves the audio chunk, the latest audio chunk continuously. And then my client, on the client side, on the website, I listen it so, uh, like I'm listening to an online radio. And then I do some more and more research. I found out some streaming protocol, and then uh, I, my, one of my uh, solution at that point is to implement a dash protocol server and then a client. And then I thought to myself, this is really complicated. Uh, is this, will this really work? And then I take a step back and I, I thought to myself, uh, what should my user flow be like? So because of at that point, I am so, um, my, my mind is so confused now, uh, and because of this very complex thing, so I hit a project reset. I delete every code and then reset everything. And then I uh, put the, uh, and then I go back uh, to brainstorm some of the ideas of the solutions. So I, after I brainstorm it, I have two big ideas. First is the static solution, uh, I call it static solution, and the next one is called server solution. The static solution is basically a single patch application, and the server solution is a client server that, that I described just now. Both of them, in both of the solution, my user flow is that user have a file, user uploads the file, and then uh, in the static solution, it's the web page itself that decodes it using whether it's JavaScript or whether this new thing called WebAssembly. And then the, it plays using Web Audio API. On the server solution, um, Usually, uh, okay, so basically the BRSTM file is uploaded to the server. The server converts it to MP3, and then um, I play it on the, on the, uh, on the website using uh, HTML audio or some live streaming protocol. So because the server side is very complicated just now, I try out the static solution. So I have two main problems now um, on the static solution. How do I decode the BRSTM on, on the website itself, like on the on the JavaScript itself. And then the next problem that I have is, how do I play it using the audio, web audio API? Because I never tried it, I never used it before. So uh, let's extract audio out of BRSTM file. Before that, I have a crash course in digital audio. So basically, um, what is sound wave? What is audio wave? Uh, audio wave is basically an analog wave represented here by the red line. And then to transform it to digital format, um, I basically I should just measure the wave at a constant interval. And then that's called sampling. And I round the value of the measurement into the nearest integer space. That's called quantization. And this integer space, like for example, in this uh, graph, there's, it's from minus 8 to positive 7. Uh, is a bit def, it's called bit def, and this bit def is 4 bit. And how often to take the measurement each second is called sample rate. So, yeah, there are some um, concepts here. Uh, basically, I have an analog sound wave, I do sampling and quantization, I get, and then, uh, use, and then there's also bit def and sample rate. Um, this is basically, after we've done all this, uh, this is basically called pulse code modulation or something like that, uh, PCM. Uh, I'm also, I'm not really familiar with this also, so uh, hopefully I'm not teaching something that's wrong. <laughs> so uh, in audio channel, uh, you might heard about uh, mono audio and stereo audio. So this stereo audio is basically two sound wave and then you just record it twice. And let's do some calculation. Uh, 
For example, you have a song in a CD from a CD that's four minutes long. A CD sample rate is a 44,100 samples per second, and there are two channels, and then the bit depth itself is for 16 bits per channel, and four minutes is 240 seconds. So if you do the calculation, your song from a CD should be 42 megabyte. So why your four minute audio file does not take up 42 megabyte of space? Because compression. So in compression, um, I have this coding, coding format. Uh, some uh, you might heard like uh, MP3, AAC or FLAC. Uh, code, and there's a codec, which is a program that encodes and decodes to, to, uh, to the coding format. And the, there's a container format, uh, which is basically a file that contains a coding format and some metadata like the artist name or the song name or something like that. So yeah, that's the end of the crash course. And now we should go to extracting BRSTM for real. So now I need to find some resources that describe this BRSTM in very technical way. And I Googled very hard and I only found these two wiki pages from like some of the modding community that describes the BRSTM file very, in very technical way. So a very short summary is that BRSTM is a container format. The coding format itself is a PCM, which is a raw audio uh, data that I described just now earlier, and all ADPCM, uh, keep that in mind later on. And other metadata like the sample rate, uh, the bit depth are all uh, specified in the BRSTM file itself. So I started a simple page that accepts a BRSTM file and reads only the metadata. So here it is. I, yeah, where's my mouse? So there. So if I select one, then I could read some metadata. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Um, it works. So what's next? The next thing is that I really need to build the audio player itself. Now I heard some uh, rumors that web audio API is kind of hard to use, but I wonder whether it's true or not. So I go and try it out. So in web audio API, um, everything is created in, with this thing called audio context. And the end goal is to connect a source or multiple sources into this destination, into this destination node. Um, and in case of my application, uh, this uh, diagram from the W3C specs itself uh, describes what I want to build. So uh, basically, I have a source. So basically, I have a source, and then uh, I decode the BRCM and then I put it into the destination. The destination is basically, uh, you can think of as, a, as if it is your speaker. And the source is that it's your file and then you convert it into audio, the audio buffer. So to do this, I just create a audio context. I create the buffer source and I, I buffer source node and then I connect these two together. So buffer source node connect to audio context destination node. The next one uh, is I get the PCM samples from BRSTM. And the next step is to um, transform this PCM, uh, PCM into the audio buffer. So basically, in this step, I create the buffer using audio context. And I uh, write it into the audio buffer. Yeah. Uh, and I write the PCM samples into the audio buffer. Yeah. And then after that, I write the audio buffer into the buffer source node, and then at the buffer source node, I start, it, start playing it. So basically, I have something like this. So what's left to do? Um, now I have the audio player. I have the metadata reading. Now I really need to decode this thing called ADPCM, the, the thing that really needs some work. So this ADPCM is, the, is one of a coding format. And now my question becomes, how do I turn this, transform this ADPCM into PCM samples? And I thought to myself, there should be an NPM package for this, right? 
oh, wow, I found one. <laughs> wow. And then I also see the documentation. Uh, the input and output is looks as expected. So I just try it. Yeah, so um, be, be warned this is faulty, so I, I need to lower my, the, my volume first. Okay. So if, if I just blindly use this, uh, yeah. so uh, you, can, you can hear that it's really faulty. Like, hmm, what's wrong with it? Yeah. So now uh, I do some more investigation. Um, and I found out that this format called this coding format called ADPCM uh, is actually there's a lot of them. There's not only one ADPCM. And I found this uh, some other wiki pages that describe like 20 of the ADPCM. So when I uh, when I say decode ADPCM in this context, what I mean is that I need to decode this Nintendo kind of ADPCM. So that means I cannot use that package. Uh. <laughs> and then I sigh and then I scratch my head. <laughs> And then uh, I wonder to myself, uh, before this, I found out that FFMPG can do this. So I dig out to the source code because it's open source. I found this brstm.c that leads to adpcm.c. But then I, I immediately uh, uh, very afraid of it, and then I close it down because it, <laughs> it handles like around 10 format, and the, the file itself is like 1,000 lines very long. Yeah. So uh, I found another, uh, before this, I found another program called Brawlbox. Um, this project itself is in C-sharp. And, um, and yeah, um, so this is the program. And because it is, it is in C-sharp, to find the relevant codes, uh, I just open up in Visual Studio and attach debugger. And I found the code, uh, the relevant codes immediately. Yeah. So uh, basically, what I do for this, so after I found these uh, two files, uh, I found the relevant codes, uh, copy paste the C sharp code, and then uh, translate it into JavaScript. And yeah, uh, it works. The, this is like my commits a long time ago. And yeah, so this should kind of work. Yes, if you can hear, it's very clean now. Mm. So, but is it finished? Uh, no, of course not. If anyone here still use Winamp, wow, <laughs> oh, it's only Mina. <laughs> so, if you if you ever use Winamp, it's basically a very amazing uh, audio player. Uh, it can it can play, it can pause, it can you can see. You can, uh, it has a display uh, of, the, of the current time. It has a playlist. It has a visualization and a lot of things. But my audio player can only just play. It cannot even stop. Yeah. So I need to build these audio players. And uh, to do this, I found a lot of uh, difficulties in using web audio API. So my audio player. Uh, I, in a very basic way, I need to have a play pause control. I need to display the current time, and I need to be able to see. Um, what I mean is, like for example, I'm in the 30th second. I need to be able to go to the 10th second, and I also need to be able to loop it. So to loop it, it's actually very easy. In Web Audio API, there's this uh, flag in Audio Buffer that. You can just set it to true, and then you can set loop start and loop end on whatever you want. So it can just it can already loop. It's very easy. That uh, to play it and pause uh, is also very easy. Um, you can suspend and resume the audio context. There are two methods here, and to seek it to seek uh, to seek um, some time in the in the audio format. Like for example, here in, here in the Winamp user interface. Uh, in HTML audio, I can just set this to to a certain time, and then it will move the current playback time to a certain specific time that I want. But in Web Audio API, at least from my experience, uh, there's no easy way. Uh, and because I'm inexperienced, maybe this is like one of the way uh, that I found that works reliably for me. 
So I need to destroy the whole audio buffer. I recreate the whole thing, connect the whole thing, and then I start playing it at a certain time. So if you remember uh, earlier on, I have this buffer source that I start immediately. There's a second parameter that has an uh, offset. So this is what uh, it means. Uh, this is what uh, I need to do. Uh, it's not very efficient, but this like one of the one of the only way that works reliably for me. And the final thing, the very annoying thing, is that the playback time display is basically impossible to to do. It's impossible to do using Web Audio API. Uh, Web Audio API has this uh, um, field called current time that displays the current playback time, but it's not relative to it is not relative to the uh, it's not relative to the uh, audio file itself. It's relative to the current starting point. So uh, as I play the audio file, and I and it starts to loop into a certain point, my expectation is that it's in the blue line. I go I go here, and then it should display back to the to to the loop point, and then it goes back to the loop end point, and so on and so forth. But the but the API that's, uh, that's provided by White Audio API, the number just grows infinitely. It didn't go back. So yeah, I found that it's impossible to do. So my, so my uh, workaround is to re-implement the whole timer. <laughs> uh, because I know uh, when, when the user starts playing it, when the user stops playing it, and when the user manipulates the time. So it's less accurate, but I have all the controls, so I just re-implement the whole thing. And finally, um, this is the final player that I have. Yeah, so I have the controls that can do that. And I can play, I can pause. I can look and yeah, so that's it for me. But before I finish my talk, I have one more story about uh, posting it somewhere. So this is called marketing. I oh, um, okay. So uh, of course there's a there's a subreddit for BRSTM, <laughs> and I submit my uh, project there, and also I also submit my project to one of the morning community forum. So in the modern community forum, I didn't receive any reply, reply at all. But in the subreddit, I received like a few bug reports and a few feature requests. And the lessons from this uh, project is that uh, I need to define my project scope before I start doing anything. <laughs> and yeah, and when I'm unfamiliar with something, I should do a lot of research first, especially when yeah, and because if you're not um, I will uh, do and wonder and wonder and wonder and keep wonder and I, I didn't do anything. And yeah, um, another lesson is that uh, don't be afraid to look into other source code, uh, other some documentation like and some npm package might lead uh, might lead you astray. And uh, but their source code never lies. And yeah, finally, what the API is kind of hard to use. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, that's all from my talk. Uh, these are links to my uh, Twitter handle and my projects. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, Henrik, we have time for a few questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to pick the questions. Pick the question, I'll read out for you. Uh, yeah, first one. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, so the first question is for you is, can other files be used rather than BRSTM? Um, currently, no. Uh, it only supports BRSTM. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, is Shopee playing BRSTM on home, on the home page now? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so so this project itself is on my personal project. It has nothing to do with my uh, employment. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, this question was asked by Eric. So uh, Eric, as a prize for answering uh, for asking the question, you have one of these flushes. <laughs> yeah, you get this. Is BRSTM only for play, for gaming music? For gaming music, um, 
I'm not too sure, but um, most of the most of the uh, uh, most of the files that I found is usually used in games. Like uh, because one of the one of the reason is that I think is because uh, in games um, a lot of time the music there in the background music uh, can loop. Uh, that's why this format uh, is very useful because this format supports looping via itself. Right. Right. Thanks. Please. So thanks, Kenrick.